The Grand Canyon Hiker Dude Show presented by Bright Angel Outfitters is back. My name is Brian Special, and this time, a conversation with a true canyon character. People come by and they look and they're like, do you see that idiot in flip-flops? He doesn't know what he's doing, da 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 The joyful and eccentric Julian Coiner is here to share what he's learned in 51 Rim to Rims. There's nothing better in the world than helping somebody inspire them to go, hey, I can, do, I can go across the Grand Canyon rim to rim. I can do pretty much anything and how he even helped a 92-year-old set a new world record. People were on top of the ring cheering. They're like, yeah, Alfredo. They were waiting for him. The Grand Canyon Hiker Dude Show is brought to you by Bright Angel Outfitters. Canyon-focused hoodies, sweatshirts, and tees are now available. Ooh Point, Ribbon Falls, Devil's Corkscrew, hey, all the trails, all the hikes featured in our one-of-a-kind designs, including a dedicated rim-to-rim collection. Find it all at the place by Canyon Lovers, for Canyon Lovers, brightangeloutfitters.com. 20 or so years ago, Julian Coiner was raising a family in Maryland. And when the weather finally turned in the right direction, he did what he always did, set off on a cross-country adventure with his son, who was eight at the time. Little did Julian know, but this trip would change his life forever. Every year I'd put them on the back of my Harley and we'd go coast to coast, 10,000 miles on the back of a Harley and we'd go to all these national parks. And then we'd fly my wife and my daughter in different places just to hang out. Well, we went to the Grand Canyon and we were just like, oh my gosh, I had never seen, you know, I'm from Iowa. So, you know, pretty flat there except for Dubuque, which has their one little whatever goes up the hill. But uh, yeah, it was, yeah. From that moment on, I was just hooked. And, uh, you know, it's in my church. It's like, I want to go there as often as I can. And now that we live here in Springdale, we moved from Hawaii about four years ago. It's uh, like you, as many times as I can. Sometimes I just wake up and tell my wife, I think I'm gonna go uh, hike rim to rim, call Trans Canyon <laughs> Shuttle, get a ticket back. Uh, and there I go. You know, and it's I, it's, I just love it. It's uh, my favorite thing to do in the world. Do you remember the first time that you laid eyes on the canyon, not necessarily hiking the canyon? You probably didn't even have that idea in your head yet, but the first time you stood there with your son, and I assume it was it on the north rim or south rim, and you, you saw it for the first time, and what, what was your reaction? Yeah, south rim. And uh, yeah, my son was, I think, eight years old at that time. And we just stood there and were like, wow, didn't even, in my mind, didn't even really say, oh, is there a hike across this thing? Right. Oh, I really wasn't thinking that way. I was just, yeah, you're awestruck. You just can't believe that there's a hole that deep uh, in our country. And it is, uh, it's just amazing. It really is. I, you just can't, you, there, there, I always say there are no pictures, there's no video, there's no words, there's nothing that describes the canyon until you're, you're standing there looking at it. And it's just, it's mind blowing, isn't it? It truly is. I mean, yeah, there's not a picture that I've ever seen that represents what you see when you step there first time, every time. I mean, like 51 times for me, I know you're uh, probably every month you were saying or what have you. <laughs> yeah, it's just unbelievable. It really is. You just can't believe it. Yeah, it just keeps us coming back, uh, coming back for more. So when did you decide that, uh, okay, I guess there is a trail down in that thing. So I, I need to try this out. When did, when did that come for the first time? So it started, you know, I'm a real estate broker. Uh, and one of my friends, uh, Richard Demitt, uh, said, hey, we're going to go to the to this ICSC conference in Vegas. And why don't we go by the Grand Canyon? And, you know, I hiked my wife across that once, you know, 30 years ago. Uh, what do you guys think about trying that? I'm like, yeah, sure. Hiked across. And from that moment on, I, I started leading trails. I just started calling friends clients hey you want to go across the grand canyon they're like what remember i took by the first guy one of the first guys manish desai he was a dunkin donuts guy and uh he had he hadn't done hardly any hiking at all now i hike i'm a triathlete so iron man and stuff so you know i'm pretty fit well he it, it was funny i took him across we started at the north rim he looked across and he called his wife and then his wife called my wife and said, Manish is so scared, he doesn't know what to do. And uh, yeah, he was scared. Uh, but we got across 
And uh, he, he, I mean, just that feeling when I got him across, uh, just watching him come out and look across and say, I can't believe I did this. I said, you know what? No more taking clients golfing, none of that kind of stuff. <laughs> Grand Canyons for me, this fills my heart to see them come out of a canyon and just, they just can't believe they've done it. Even, you know, even when they think they're going to do it, they get to the canyon and then they question themselves. And that's where I feel I come in my experience and letting them know, hey, it's all going to be good. You're going to be great. Yeah. What do you hear from people? Because it can be an extremely intimidating place. And I, I, I assume that you're doing it a lot of times guiding people who maybe are seeing it for the first time. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's funny. Uh, you know, I build them up. I talk to them and Hey, I'm not a commercial guider or anything. I take friends, clients, friends of friends and stuff like that across the Grand Canyon. So I build them up before we get to the Grand Canyon. So, Hey, you know, these are the types of hikes you need to do. I just got a call from my mom's friend in Iowa. Hey, they're, they're just like a group of four girls want to go. I had a nice talk with them. This is the things I think you need to do. You need to get these hikes in. So you build them up, but you know, kind of the second part that's the funnest is when you get them to the rim, they've never been there. And then they go, what? <laughs> they don't realize, yeah, we're going to go across this and they get really nervous. So you kind of, you have that high of, yeah, you build them up. We can do this. this. And then we get to the, to the rim and they're like questioning themselves. And it's really cool to build them back up to the, to the start point at the trailhead and then getting them all the way across the relationships you build the uh, i mean just seeing someone uh kind of broken to i did this i i can't believe this i can't believe i did this and there's nothing better in the world than helping somebody inspire them to go hey i can do i can go across the grand canyon rim to rim i can do pretty much anything and I think that's what they say. They really come out and like, you know what? I can attack life. You know, my friend's wife, I've taken her across twice. Both times she had just finished chemo. And the first time we went across, um, you know, she was nervous, da, 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 and it was in the heat. So we went south to north, which is even harder. <laughs> you know, you get to right before Manzanita, you're burned out. And then, like I tell everybody, yeah, the, the first 19 miles is this, zero. It's the last four and a half or five miles at Manzanita or at Supai uh, Indian Gardens uh, that really the hike starts uh, for most people because they're already tired. And, you know, well, you know, it's the, that's the hardest part of the hike is the yeah. last five miles. Yeah, it starts at uh, Manzanita on the on the north side for sure. And definitely to have a Supai Gardens on the south side. You're yeah. 51 for 51, I assume. Have there been any issues where you haven't been able to get someone across? You had to call for help, anything like that? Or do you always get them through? And, and, no, no, no. And I assume always. sometimes you, you question if you're going to be able to. I'm sure people struggle all the time. Well, you know, never had an issue myself or anyone that I've ever taken. Now, rescuing people, that's a different story. You know, I've had people, uh, devil's corkscrew, devil's backbone, whatever you want to call it. I remember once I was doing a rim to rim to rim, and I came back after having a little dinner on the south and was going back to the north, and there was a girl and her friend. The girl was laying in the middle of the trail, like three quarters of the way up devil's uh, backbone. Mm -hmm. Eyes rolled back. Her friend oh, was geez. just crying over, didn't know what to do, you know. Uh, I mean, they didn't have any water. They had no food. They had come down the south rim, so we were going to go to the river and then go back up. Mm -hmm. And they didn't. They made it back to to Devil's Backbone, and that that was it. So I, I'm a big proponent of uh, uh, thermo tabs. I don't know if you've heard of those. Mm -hmm. It's straight salt supplement, and you can get them buffered. You have to get them at the pharmacy. But in triathlon, like when I have the gray spots and I'm starting to bonk, I hit a couple of these thermo tabs. You chew them up; they taste horrible. Hit a couple goos in a bunch of water. Three minutes later, you're alive. You're like, oh, I can do this. I'm ready to go. So all the people that I've rescued along, that's what I've hit them with. A couple thermo tabs. They chew them up. They're buffered so your stomach doesn't get sick. And then uh, some water and a couple goos. And I'll tell you, five, ten minutes later, they come back to life pretty much and can continue on. 
that group, is that what though, I actually gave them. Oh, what's that? I was just going to say, is that what happened with this group? Yeah, I gave her Thermotabs this. We sat there for 15 minutes, uh, gave them all the rest of the water I had because I was only going from there down to uh, Phantom Branch. Yeah, they. I, I assume they got back up to Indian Gardens. I mean, wow. she was fine. She seemed better. I mean, she was fine. But yeah, that was probably the worst one I've ever had. Uh, was that in the heat? Was it hot yeah, that day? Yeah. yeah Direct was, sunlight? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, they went down earlier and then coming back up from the yeah. river. And I mean, just clueless. They had no idea what they were doing. I think we all have stories like that. If you if you hike the canyon yeah. regu regularly enough, I mean... I always say that when you're standing there in the village outside Bright Angel Lodge um, uh, and just looking down uh, from the South Rim, you see Havasupai Gardens, you see Plateau Point. Yep. You're like, you know what? That doesn't look that far. That's not, yeah, we can we can do that. Uh, the right. river, it's only it's only what, five miles, uh, five miles past the, the greenery down there at Havasupai Gardens. Yeah. We can do that. And then you go down and it feels so easy going down. And then people right. forget that they have to come back up. They don't take yeah. enough water. They yeah. get themselves in so much trouble, man. It's just... Uh... I got a good story for you, though, on that one. Uh, so that was a rim to rim to rim. And, uh, you know, hey, even experienced hikers make mistakes. I wore a pair of loose yoga pants and went commando. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> By the time I got the Phantom Ranch, I was fine. I got the Phantom Ranch. And I'm like, oh, what's going on down there? I looked, I was so chafed, it was cut bloody. I mean, it was it was horrible. But the funny part is, is okay, it was night, it was full moon. I had my Aloha shirt on and my, my, my you know, my slippers, my uh, flip-flops. So I went butt naked, just with my shirt and flip-flops hiking up the North Rim. I came out, my wife's like, and I did pass a few people. It was dark, so you know not, <laughs> they didn't really see anything too much. I don't think. But I mean, I could. I was walking bull leg. I could barely walk because it was oh. so bad. I mean, it was it was horrible. Uh, never again will I ever what's, try. What's the lesson you learned on that one, Julian? Yeah, wear wear the uh, the tight <laughs> underwear so your thighs don't rub together. <laughs> well, any any underwear would help too, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you will hike in. Uh, you, you hike in colorful attire. You'll hike in yoga pants. And I know that you hike, Julian, in footwear that, you know, we always hear people ask, do I wear trail runners? Do I wear hiking boots? What do I wear into the canyon? You, Julian, from what I've, I've been able to ascertain, you wear flip-flops on your hikes. Uh, how, how, long, how, long, how long has that been going on for? And, and why the heck do you do that? I would, I, I think it's after the first time that I hiked the Grand Canyon. I, you know, went to REI, and got the coolest boots, spent what two fifty, whatever, and I hiked the Grand Canyon. I come out, I got blisters all over my feet, and I, I brand new pair of uh, uh, hiking boots. I took them, I threw them in the trash, and my friend that I hiked across was like, "Man, those are two hundred fifty dollar uh, boots." He pulls them out. He still has them till today. So, you know, living in Hawaii, uh, you know, we're in slip as we call them, flip-flops. And I actually brought a few to show you. So uh, this is called the dress slipper. This uh -huh. one is leather. Little different sole with some, uh, uh, you know, leather on the bottom. Uh, great for dress up. These are my hiking slippers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look at these. So beautiful. Sexy. Olakai. I love those guys. They send me slippers every once in a while. <laughs> I don't know if I ever saw a pair of Olakai's and thought, and thought I would hike the Grand Canyon in them, but... I've gone... Every hike I do, I do this. I did uh, over and back, rim to rim to rim in these every time I hike. And believe me, my friends are usually behind me. I'm leading. And people come by and they look and they're like, start saying stuff. <laughs> you know, they're passing people they don't think I'm with. They're like, do you see that idiot in flip-flops? He's prop. He doesn't know what he's doing. Da, 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 da. So I love it. I love the, when they look and they're like flip flops. And I'm like, what the heck? I said, someone stole my shoes down the trail. And this is all I had. You know, I, I, I try to have fun on the trail. Uh, you know, people are tired. People are exhausted. So, you know, I find myself as a comedian on the trail. And uh, <laughs> God, I remember one time I stubbed my toe. You know, hiking in flippers can be uh, deadly of course, and my toe was bleeding. So everyone I came across after that, I said, oh, I just got bit by a rattlesnake. And 
and, and, and I do sometimes carry a fake rattlesnake with me of course to scare friends on the trail. Um, <laughs> I did it to a ranger, though. They weren't very, they were like, ah, oh, that's not really funny. At your feet feel good at the end of a, of a hike in flip-flops? They feel amazing. I, I, wow. I, I don't know what it is. You know, wow. hey, I, I, turned 50, I turned 60 April 28th. And knock on wood, you know, a lot of my friends, and I'm a triathlete too, so you think my joints would be worn out, da 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 da. Zero. I'm so lucky. And hiking in flip flops, I think it actually makes me stronger. My legs are stronger than most, you know, being able to, you know, the flexing and, you know, walking down rocks just in regular shoes coming down the north or whatever is, is not easy in anything. Much less, you know, in some uh, olakais and uh, you got snow, ice. I don't carry poles. I do have some crampons that fit on my slippers. Uh, we're doing it in March, so I think I'm going to have to wear the, the crampons on my slippers to maybe get down the south rim. We'll see. Oh, what a sight that'll be. Yeah. No poles. No poles. <laughs> never, never. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes I carry them just for other people. Like in my... Yeah, most most of the people in my groups half will carry them, half won't. But I don't. I I find most people are dragging them. Their arms are exhausted. You know, can, I don't know. Maybe I just have good balance and uh, yeah, or whatever. I'm pretty lucky. But yeah, I, I have a nice set of poles, and I'll put them on my pack in case somebody needs them. But yeah, never. Folks, this show is made possible by Bright Angel Outfitters, a company my wife and I founded that's purpose is to help you have the best experience in and the fondest memories of the magnificent Grand Canyon. If you go to our website right now, brightangeloutfitters.com, you'll find our new collection of hoodies, tees, and sweatshirts that all have a Grand Canyon theme. Now you can wear ooh -ah point on your chest or show off that you're a rim-to-rim -rim finisher or even motivate yourself with our rim-to-rim in-training -rim hoodies something for any canyon lover we'd be grateful if you would check it out at brightangeloutfitters.com all right so far julian coiner has shown himself to be somewhat of a trail jester always looking for a good time as he guides folks across the canyon but there's a reason for that light-hearted fun-loving approach encouragement and distraction hiking rim to rim is hard and he thinks the more he can take people's minds off their physical and mental pain, the better hike they'll end up having. Julian recently put all his talents to the test on a pair of rim to rims he'll never forget. Your last two rim to rims, I'm guessing, were probably uh, your most memorable. Just a month apart, October 23rd, uh, you served as a witness slash coach as you helped 92-year-old, 92-year-old Alfredo Aliaga set Guinness World Record, uh, Alfredo being the oldest known person to ever hike rim to rim. That's memorable moment number one. That, that had to be an incredible experience. I want that, to hear all that. Is, that. that is number one. But also, but also, it has to be a close second. Just a month later, you hiked across with your 29-year-old son for the first time. Yep. So let's start yep. with that one. What was that like? Uh, taking your 29-year-old across for the very first time, and why did it take so long? Well, you know, what's funny is that uh, Alfredo did better. <laughs> he did better than my son. My son did great, okay? But, you know, going down the trail, you know, he's 29. Oh, yeah, he, he was skipping or doing something silly. I said, oh, you just wait. Well, we get to Phantom Ranch. His legs are hurting. Ah, da 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 and I'll tell you, we headed up. His right leg was really injured. But, I mean, he pressed on, but I had him taking a lot of breaks. And, uh, yeah, it was amazing for, for us to be there when he was eight years old and then for him to be there and hike across. And I did hike my daughter across. My former uh, wife, uh, Maya, passed away. So I took my daughter with her ashes across the Grand Canyon, uh, 2015 or something like that. So my daughter got to go first. Uh, and then, you know, like I said, my son, uh, who lives in Denver, 
well, I was here for Thanksgiving and I said, yeah, let's go do the Grand Canyon, you know, and he, he's in Denver. So he does, you know, what, as he says, I do 14ers. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> okay, buddy. Yeah. You're driving up to what? 12,000 feet. I don't know. I just joking to him, but, uh, he went across, but he was, he was a little injured and he has a big respect, even a more bigger respect for me. I think now that, yeah. God, my dad's sixties, I'm half his age. And he'll be 30 in February. And he's like, gosh, and you did it in your flip flops. How, how do you, you know, how do you do that? So it and, sounds and, like he learned, it sounded like he learned the most valuable Canyon lesson that I think there is. And that is that the downfall is in the downhill. True. Yeah. Yeah. you got, you got to train. Everybody thinks it's easy going down for me. Honestly, I think it is easier, but it's not. That is definitely where you're doing the wear and tear, the beating on your legs and stuff like that. Um, kind of tying my son together with Alfredo. Uh, when I was hiking Alfredo across, you know, he was 92 and we were almost to the top. I said, you know what, Alfredo, I'm going to get you at 93. I'm going to be 93 and I'm going to beat your record. And, and I was talking to my son coming up. He goes, dad, I'll come and I'll be your witness and take you across and stuff. So it was kind of a, uh, a surreal moment. And then Alfredo said, Hmm, what's next year? Like he wants to push out my 93 <laughs> yeah. to 94 or something. Uh, and, and it, we might be hiking with Alfredo again, uh, in October, but you know what? They just sent this to me. Uh, I can send you a picture of this later, but, uh, uh Jurgen and Annabelle just sent me, uh, some photos of us on the grand Canyon. They wrote this beautiful little, no thanking me for, um, you know, I was supposed to be on one end and just hike across, not with them per se. And I said, you know what, I'll just hike with you guys and I'll do whatever pace you need to do. I just wanted to make sure they're safe because 92 years old going across the Canyon. I mean, I've had taken people across in their 1920 and they're complaining, they're tired, they're hot. He never complained. He is, I would say, my favorite hiker ever. I wow. mean, 92 years old, balance, just determination, uh, just an amazing guy. I mean, everything he's done in his life and then to culminate with this uh, uh, world record, hopefully with Guinness Book of World Record to be announced here in the next few days, I believe. Um, no more, there's nothing more inspiring than that. You know, if you're watching this podcast or you're thinking, oh, can I do the Grand Canyon? You know, there's some Facebook uh, uh, chat groups, uh, Rim to Rim, Grand Canyon Rim to Rim, and a few other ones. And you can get some good information on there. People are very willing to um, talk to you about, you know, what it takes. And, and not just a little blurb of, oh, yeah, you know, it's hard. And, you know, they can actually, I mean, I get calls all the time from people on those groups and, hey, do you mind if I talk to you for 20 minutes? Yeah, no problem. Because they want to know, well, really, what is it like? You know, where there's some cool spots. you like Manzanilla right after that. If you're coming up from the south and it's so hot, you know that little waterfall right there uh, before you get to Manzanilla on the left? I'm always, the group I bring, I'm like, okay, it's only another 10 minutes, 15 minutes of Manzanilla where water is. But, man, let's get down to our skivvies and let's jump in this water. <laughs> Let's say really experience, shock the system, get up there, have some water, take a rest, and then get the hardest part of the hike and stuff. So just so love how it. did how did the Alfredo thing come about? Yeah, so another Facebook thing. So uh, uh, I'm on this Facebook chat chat group or what have you, and a friend of mine saw Annabelle and Jurgen post, um, hey, we need a witness or some witnesses to show that my 92 year old father made it across the Grand Canyon. They were worried because the, uh, uh, there might've been a shutdown at the park. So they weren't sure if there'd be Rangers and stuff. So they put it out. My friend got a hold of me that I hiked Havasupai with in May, beginning of May, said, Julian, these guys need you. They need you. He's 92 years old. You know, anything can happen. And I, I was supposed to do Ironman Tempe. Uh, in October, the half Ironman race that right in that time. And I was like, oh, there's no way I could do both of those. I'm going to be spent. So it took me about two days. And I was talking to my wife and I said, you know what? 
that's more important. It'll be my 50th time across. And I was planning a 50th time across with a bunch of friends in May, which will probably go in May again. But I said, what better fitting way to hike a 92-year-old across on my 50th uh, rim to rim? So we met, had dinner the night before. Of course, you know, I'm a little crazy. They're like, my God, this guy is like, <laughs> go, 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 go. But like Annabelle said in uh, another uh, podcast we were doing, she's like, you know, you took a lot of the weight of the worrying off my off my head because she worries and worries and worries. And I kind of just took charge and said, okay, we're going to have fun. And, and the funniest thing Alfredo said, we were down, we just uh, – come we we're just getting ready to head up the south rim, uh, rim we came along the ledge there the the left turn to go up we sat there and annabelle kept telling him you need to eat some salt you need to do this you need to do that and uh you're not listening to me and alfredo goes what julian says i do it <laughs> and she was like okay i'm done julian whatever julian says that's what we do and stuff so it was just, it's just amazing. Alfredo, he's so cute. I mean, 92 years old, you know, we just, my wife and I just got done, uh, her grandmother just passed away at 98 and a half. We moved her to Hurricane right outside of Springdale uh, for her last 16, 17 months of her life. 98 and a half, been to the Grand Canyon, passed out, you know, with the elevation, two ambulances rides to Kanab. Um, so I kind of saw, gosh, anything can happen and stuff. So, I mean, I brought some oxygen. I actually bought a book with anything that could happen, you know, and I was a lifeguard in Kauai a couple of days a week for two or three years. So, you know, we had some first responder training, but you never know this, that, or whatever. I wanted to be able to quick reference. This is how he feels. Okay. What do we do? So I kind of took it on myself, do a little research. So I had to think about two weeks before that, uh, before we did the rim to rim and, uh, he did great. I mean, I had oxygen. He needed nothing. He he did take some thermo tabs, which he loved because, he you know, people cramp. I don't know if you know this, but the reason why people cramp is they're eating on the Grand Canyon and not drinking enough. And what happens is your stomach needs water to digest your food. When you don't give it water, what happens is it calls to the biggest source of water in your body, your bigger muscles, your thigh, you know, all those muscles brings it in there and then you cramp. So he was cramping a little bit. I gave him those thermo tabs. Oh, he was he was like, oh my gosh, because it it's, it takes that water and distributes it with the salt and stuff like that. So, um, but he, he was amazing. I just I just can't believe that I took him across and he may go this year again. We'll see. Well, I imagine he created quite a scene out there. What do you remember remember most from the actual hike? You know, everybody wanted to stop stop and take a picture with them and 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 say hey you're doing you're inspiring do you're doing all the stuff the thing of it is is that you know if you're stopping every 15 steps or whatever you really you know god we need to get down there it took us 11 hours to get down to phantom from the north rim which is that's a, that's a that's a good amount of time the most memorable was a group of firefighters they stopped and they gave him their patch. They knew he was coming across. They they were just looking for him the whole way. They and they got a photo with him, gave him a patch. And I'll tell you, all the people that were talking to uh, Alfredo all the way across, even though it slowed him down a little bit, you know, Annabelle was kind of pushing him. Come on, I'm like, oh, we're having fun. You know, he's a geologist too, so he's hey, you know, the mountains over here. This rock is the supai layer. And Annabelle's like, okay, we understand that. Let's keep going. But uh, he inspired everybody. It, it was amazing. I mean, there was young 10-year-old hiking. And to see a 92-year-old and people that were exhausted on the trail, to see a 92-year-old come by, there's, there's not a way that you can't say, you know what, I need to get over this little bit. I'm tired. He's 92. He's 60 years older than I am and stuff. So yeah, it was it was amazing. It was one of the top highlights of my life, I think, seeing him do that and uh, developing an amazing friendship with him and his daughter and son-in-law and stuff. What was the feeling like when you guys surfaced? Oh, my gosh. You know, we, we, we were taking little breaks here and there. Alfredo, though, he was go, go, go. Man, we got to that first sign and he made the right to get up to the south rim. He's like, put his sticks up. Yes, I'm 
<laughs> we're almost there. And people were on top of the ring cheering. They're like, yeah, Alfredo. They were waiting for him. I mean, they've done all these television programs, news stories about him. And for him to come out and us to see them just cheering him on, he had the biggest smile to raise his, his hiking poles. I mean, there's nothing better. A 92-year-old doing this. How, do they, how did he do that? You think I would have been nervous taking him across? I wasn't. I got there. I met him. He said, oh, yeah. So we had, we met on Thursday, Friday. Yeah, we're going to go for like a two or three mile hike. I'm like, wow, you never hear that from anybody, really. <laughs> he was just going to loosen up his legs. But, uh, yeah, him coming out. Yeah, it was it was emotional, you know, just to see him uh, make that and uh, and still have a smile on his face and – you know, no issues through the whole thing. Not one issue the whole way through. He was happy, having fun. It, it was great. What do you think the biggest lesson in uh, the average person, the person who's uh, in the Midwest or back East, uh, the Grand Canyon looks like uh, uh, this impossible journey, this impossible dream. What can they learn from what this 92 year old did? Well, you know, nothing, nothing's impossible. The key is, you have to train. You have to. It's like in triathlon. You have a race. You back out your training. So your race is December 1st. Okay, it's eight months before. These are the steps I need to do to get to that point. Um, it just shows that you can do it. Get off your sofa. I mean, at that age, he even said, you know, there's three things that he said that you need to do. You know, drink water <laughs> and eat, sleep well and hike every single day, walk every day, you know, even if it's just to your mailbox, you know, uh, everything starts with, you know, the hardest part of anything, doing anything in life is what? Your first step out of bed. Every, after you get out of bed, you know, your, your mind tells you different things when you're laying in bed. So I always tell everybody, they're always like, yeah, you know, da, da, da. I said, don't worry about all the other stuff. First step out of the bed, hit your alarm. My alarm comes off. It says attack life every morning. I'm in my hot tub at four o'clock in the morning, every morning for two hours, little Deepak Chopra for like 45 minutes, just to clear the mind and then try to figure out, okay, what am I going to do? Every day has to have a purpose. Like going to the gym, going to hike. If you're just going to the gym and doing this and you're not like, Hey, I'm going to work my bicep and tricep today, or, you know, I'm going to hike and I'm going to do five miles but it's gonna be just hills, up and down, up and down. That's how you get to where Alfredo is. And without that, don't hike the Grand Canyon if you don't train and don't know what the weather's gonna be and do some research. Cause you can end up one of those people, we had 10 last year that passed away. You're not saying, I'm not sure what their situations was, but best bet is to be as prepared as you can. You know, everybody says to me, this is the funniest thing. Everybody's like, Julian, you do all this stuff. You know, you only live once. And I tell them, what do you mean? You only die once. You live every day. So get out of bed, start doing whatever. Walk to your mailbox first and then say, hey, I'm going to walk a mile. It all starts with that. Anybody can group those things together and hike that Grand Canyon if they truly want to do it. And there's people out there, myself, you, that are willing to share their, their information and their motivation to do stuff like that. Yeah. There's nothing better than, than seeing someone come out of the Canyon and they're emotional and <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. it, that place just does something to you. Julian's guiding style is rooted in selflessness to him. It's not about setting time records. It's about getting across safely and with a smile on your face. It's a style that also relies on the power of observation. In fact, Julian will go to just about any length to make sure his hiking partners have a successful day, even at the expense of his own ego. You know, I fake injuries sometimes. Uh, so we'll be hiking and people are like, oh yeah, let's keep going. I want to get to the top. But you can tell they're going to bonk in like, you know, another 100 or 200 yards. So I'm like, oh, you know, I just hurt my leg. We, can we stop just for a second? And, and it's funny because we come out of the canyon and, you know, they'll, we'll see my wife when we get back to our house or whatever. And they'll be like, oh, Jen, Julian was really injured. He, <laughs> we had to slow down because 
And she just laughs because she knows it's me faking, you know, rabbiting, turtling, you know, rabbiting when people are kind of dragging, but you know they got more. So I might go a little further ahead that makes them pick up. Or if I think that, hey, they're going a little too fast, I'll get in the back of the of our our group and start going slower. And our main rule is if you can't see somebody, you slow down. We only mm -hmm. hike as fast as the slowest hiker. Doesn't matter how fast or how slow you are. The goal is everyone comes out of the canyon at the exact same time with a smile on their face. What's the number one training tip? Uh, number one is uh, I'd say you've got to do a 16 or 18 mile hike a month before, just so your body goes, okay, I did 18. Even if it's flat, who cares? You got some mileage in. You know, me, I have a 10 mile hike behind my house, the Chin Lee Trail. When I do rim to rim to rim, I'll do that 30 days in a row, 10 miles every morning, getting up, get to the trailhead at four, and then hike back to my house and my wife will take me down. It's about a three and a half, four hour hike, primarily flat. You got to get your miles in. You know, that's how my son got tricked. You know, he thought, oh yeah, you know, I hike these 14ers and I'm doing all this stuff, but you got to have the mileage in. Uh, water, obviously, and salt and sugar. Salt, sugar, you know, and, and water are the, the main things. It's one of those three things you're lacking. Don't get behind your water, but only drink when you're thirsty. Uh, you know, I had, uh, in May, I hiked a group across and the, the girlfriend was drinking too much water. And I kept saying, here, take some thermo tabs, eat, eat, eat this food. And like I tell everyone, we start the hike, you're responsible for your own safety. And number two, if don't argue with me, if Julian says, I need you to do this, it's because I'm seeing things in you that need to be done. She ambulance ride to uh, Flagstaff two days in the hospital. Too much water and uh, what do you call that, hypotrenia or something? I'm not sure what it was, but too much water she hadn't distributed. And when we got to mile and a half, she got sick. I mean, it was like Linda Blair, water. It was unbelievable how much water was in her system. And what did I say? You need to take a break. Let's sit here for 15 minutes, take a little salt, eat a little something, let's relax. But she saw we're so close. No, she pushed, 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 got to the top. Ambulance ride to, to Flagstaff, but she's fine. She had, I think, an underlying something also, uh, something with her salt, her electrolyte stuff in her body normally, uh, but she made it. I mean, she was, I mean, I was like, we got to take a break. She's like, nope. I mean, she picked up her stuff and started going up and I'm like, okay. So, but she's fine. Great story <laughs> for later. That no is, one, no one died. So. That is quite a story. Uh, yeah. You mentioned, you've mentioned the thermo tabs uh, quite a few times. Yeah. What, what do you recommend that people consume? Because that can be one of the hardest parts and it's a very uh, individual, individualized yeah. part of hiking the Canyon too. I always find yeah. it incredibly difficult to stay on top of nutrition and hydration. Uh, what do you yeah. see people do? What do you think works best? Well, uh, you know, the, the, I don't know if it's noon or whatever. A lot of people just take it with their water. That's, that's not for me. I don't like the taste of uh, that stuff in plastic. Are those goos? Bags. Is that what you're talking about? No, in the plastic, you know, your uh, bag in the back of your pack. I don't even carry one of those. Uh, I carry a, a, a little thermo thing packed full of ice, and then I chew ice chips. Like if you're going across in July or August, there's nothing like having a whole thing of ice chips to put on your head, put down your shorts, whatever, if you're really, really hot. Um, but yeah, just, you gotta, you just gotta, you know, one thing of water, one thing of, uh, salt supplement, the, the thermo tabs I just take because that's what I've always used in Ironman and it goes straight to your system. Um, you know, check with your doctor, it's straight salt. So you get the buffered kind. So it has some aspirin in it so you don't get sick. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not even up to date on what the, the, the thing, everybody has their thing, but whatever, whatever you train with, that's what you should take on the hike. And number two, you don't have to eat a million things. Everybody thinks I'm going across the Grand Canyon. Okay, it takes, let's just say 10 to 12 hours. You don't need to eat 10 protein bars or whatever. A lot of people think, oh, I got to get my calories because, well, not really. I mean, 
what would you do in a normal 12 hour pace? Yeah, maybe you'd have one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and maybe one, three bars. But I've seen people like, oh, I've got to eat da 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 da. I got to have four bars on the way down to to Phantom. You know, I like crustables, you know, peanut butter and jelly crustables going down and you get the Phantom, get a, you know, God, they used to have the summer sausage, but now they have beef sticks or something. But a nice uh, bagel, cream cheese, uh, you know, jelly, the lemonade, we all know is amazing. Um, but that's a great place to take your thermal flask that you carry on the front that you have the ice whenever you need it. You, by the time you get down, it's halfway gone probably. Drink your lemonade, rinse out your ice, pour the ice in there, get another lemonade for a dollar, and then pour that in. So when you're going up the south, man, I got a whole nother thing of ice to suck on and to, you know, keep you motivated. Because when it gets hot, you know, drinking water out of your little bag out in the back or whatever, and it's warm, you know, it's it's not the tastiest, we'll say. I, I bring a root beer with me, a little small little root beer, a couple of those. Um, I bring a Gatorade and then use the Gatorade bottle, just a small one. Use the Gatorade bottle in the streams to douse, you know, douse your head when you're, if you're there in June and July and August. Um, you know, you got to stay on it. You really can't wait until it's too late because it will be too late. Are there specific things that, that you see people, uh, especially eat that seem to, that seem to work that's consistent across, uh, across everyone? Well, I like Fritos, uh, tons of salt on those pretzels, you know, you want salty foods, potato chips. And, and I don't, I don't even know what the potato chip thing is because in Ironman, you know, you get to whatever on the run, you have six miles left and all of a sudden you start seeing potato chips and Coke. Somebody had told me, and I don't know if this is true, that potato chips and the salt help the bottom of your feet with the oil and the salt and whatever. So, you know, that's why I like Fritos. So I chew Fritos. And I mean, I hike in flip-flops, my feet never hurt. And I eat Fritos. And, and the key is, you know, when your bag, you don't need a giant bag if you're day hiking across. You know, take your potato chips and smash them in your bag. They roll them up. It's smaller. They don't have to be perfect bite sized. You know, eat the eat the little crumbles. And that's what I do. And I try to show people, God, look at your pack. You got all this water, all this. Okay, we're hiking, depending on which side you're going. If you're coming down the south, we got three stops before we get the phantom. You don't need, you know, 400 liters of water to carry past all the water stops. Obviously, you know, you got to know if those water stops are open or not and be prepared to filter water if you have to. But, you know, I start out with, you know, yeah, I, I'm a camel, as my wife says, you know, I, I, I save my water for others on the trail, which is kind of funny because uh, you always run into somebody. Oh, I don't have any water. Do you have a filter? No, it's like. Okay, well, here, here, take my water and, uh, you know, be smarter next time or what have you. I, I always feel like, or I feel like the, the best piece of advice that I've ever gotten um, on doing rim to rim, it was before I, I did my, my first one. Uh, and you have all these questions and you're worried about everything. And I hear a lot of this in, in what you're describing, what, that people think they have to carry all this stuff, all these protein bars, all this water. But the number one piece of advice that I've got, and I'm curious what you think of it, is don't overthink it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even even Alfredo said when he and I were talking, yeah, if you overthink it, you're never going to do anything. You know, that's called, I, I'm afraid of pulling the trigger. Do your, do your due diligence, learn as much as you can, and listen to your body as you go across the canyon. Your mind is pretty much half of the battle of going across the rim to rim, you're, you know, you can walk 24 miles. Most people, uh, if you're semi-active, you know, with the elevation, it changes it. But if you're, uh, if you think you can do it, you can do it. You know, you might have to rest a half an hour. You might have to sit at Phantom for two hours. You might have to say, okay, I'm not gonna go up the South Rim until 3.30 or four, and I'm just gonna come out in the nighttime because it's too hot and I just, I haven't acclimated to the heat the way I wanted. But don't overthink it. Just like you said, you just have to uh, do your plan, try to follow it the best you can. Something always goes haywire. You know, you're like, oh, I thought I was gonna eat this food, but gosh, I really don't wanna eat that food. 
You know, I bring Jolly Ranchers, you know, for people on the trail. Here, suck this. Keeps the moisture in your mouth. And it's kind of fun little treat and stuff. Uh, Julian seems like the perfect uh, hiking partner. My gosh. Always, always, always smiling, always laughing. Out. Oh, we're doing we're, it. Oh, that's we're happening. have some fun. I, I'm not wearing flip-flops and I'm not going commando though, man. I'm, I'm Okay, yeah. Right no, commando's out for me too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what about the time of uh, time of year? That's always a, a very important part of deciding to do rim to rim because unfortunately yeah. the season for rim to rim uh, is really May fifteenth to October fifteenth, uh, a little bit longer um, in, into the fall uh, because they yeah. do keep the gate, gate open. But services on the south rim or on the north rim shut down on October fifteenth. Um, so yeah. it's the heat of the the heat of the summer is really a big part of rim to rim. Uh, season. What do you find the I- ideal time, and is it possible for people to do it in the in the summertime? Uh, well, obviously, optimum time May fifteenth to June fifteenth, or September fifteenth, October fifteenth. Trends to be tends to be a little bit cooler those times, but man, I've I've hiked it every month, but January, January, February. I'm getting ready to do March this year, but it's not going to be rim to rim. It's going to be South Kaibab. Phantom Ranch back to South Kaibab will probably go up towards the North Rim uh, with Jurgen, uh, Alfredo's son-in-law, in March. Um, yeah, June 15th through September 15th. Yeah, it, it, it's hot. And if you're going to do it at that time, uh, I mean, it's I've done it through all those months multiple, multiple times. I actually love the heat. I love the challenge uh, uh, of the mind. You know, when you're so hot and, you know, yeah, the summer, summer's hard. You can do it in the summer, but boy, you've really got to be on your water, salt, and sugar. And uh, if it's your first time, I'd recommend hitting those two shoulder season portions of it and and understanding what it is and then doing some training in heat. You know, I've been down uh, Phantom 120, 126, even hotter, I think, 130. That's in the shade, you know, even at uh, Supai Indian Gardens, you know, the clock there is usually in the shade and it could say like 120. So that means if you're in the sun, you're probably 128, 130 maybe. So you could do it, but if it's your first time, I say pick those shoulder seasons and uh, kind of get a, a good feel for what the hike really is. What to you would make up the perfect rim to rim experience? The whole experience from, from what rim you start from, what rim you finish at, um, everything in between, dinner, all that stuff. What, what What's the perfect rim-to-rim experience for someone? So, obviously, I mean, I, I really like south to north. It's harder, but but it's just really cool coming out of the north, I think. You know, there's so many people on the south, and I just like it that way. So, if, it, if, I, if I had my brothers, I could do whatever I want. I'd go to the south rim probably two days before. Uh, go to uh, uh, have some dinner at, have a steak or whatever over at uh, uh, El Tavar Hotel or whatever, the pizza over at uh, Maswick Lodge too. I love that. That brew pub place there is amazing. You know, have a nice dinner, you know, two nights before the night of, you know, have a salad, a piece of fish, something. That's what I would want. You know, do a little shopping and then uh, 4 a.m. start the rim with 50 of my best friends or 50 people that I know. And I'm starting a list right now for May because I was going to do 50 and I'm going to go back to everyone I've hiked across and there's pretty close to 50 people. And I'm going to go back and say, hey, you guys want to do this? And then go down the south and, you know, stop at Phantom, you know, just a day hike. I love day hiking. I'm not, and I like going up to some of the waterfalls and doing some of the side hikes too, depending on when I want to come out. It's never about a time for me. Everybody's like, oh, well, how fast did you do? If you're talking about time to go across the Grand Canyon, you, you, you don't really don't understand what the Grand Canyon's about. Sure, you want to come out, you know, 12, 14 hours, because after that, it starts to get to be a little much. But you can see everything day hiking across. But, you know, don't worry about the time. Just worry about the experience. Stop and take a photo when you want and ask questions, figure out what it is. People on the trail are more than willing to to talk and, and share their experiences and stuff. And then, you know, a douse in the, you know, stop at Phantom Ranch, obviously, uh, have my lemonade and bagel cream cheese and what have you. And then, 
uh, right before you get out to, uh, 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 you know, uh, Manzanita, definitely a swim in the waterfall there on the left-hand side. Uh, God, that water's ice cold, but boy, you come out of that and you go, okay, now I've got, I've got five miles to go. This is nothing, is what most people say <laughs> until they start up that first, uh, that first incline. Uh, and then come out, you know, obviously stay on the North Rim at the the lodge, have dinner there. And then on the way back, stop at uh, Jacob Lake, get their cookies. They're the best. Oh, Probably yeah. a milkshake, um, you know, take the shuttle back, back around or what have you. I mean, to me that, you know, and everybody's safe. I mean, that's the most important thing is, you know, hey, we're, let's hike the Grand Canyon, but let's all be safe and let's be responsible because, you know, when you put your life in danger going down into the canyon the canyon can give you a lot of different scenarios you're not in charge if you think you're in charge you're not in charge the canyon is in charge of the whole hike uh if it's going to be hot if it's going to be this that or whatever in your body it's like triathlon you get to the start line the hardest part is getting to the start line but you never know what that day will bring for your body you could do all the training you want just be prepared Last couple of things. Just what yeah. would you say to someone who's enamored with the idea of doing the canyon? Maybe they're they're hanging out in the Facebook groups. They're seeing everybody's yep. stories. It's so exciting. It's so inspiring. They're enamored with doing it, but they're not sure if they have what it takes. What would you say to those people? Put it out to the universe. First thing you do is say, I'm going to do this. Tell as many people as you can, because what will they do? They'll hold you accountable. They'll say, well, you said you were going to hike the Grand Canyon. To me, that's motivating. Maybe some it's not. But I think first thing to do is just to say, I'm going to do it. And then back in, what do I need to do to get to that point? You know, you don't say, hey, I want to do it and then do it in a week. <laughs> that, that doesn't work. Uh, hey, I'm going to do it like this uh, person from the Facebook chat called me. Uh, hey, do you mind if I call you for 20 minutes? They're going to go in October said, okay, that's smart. You know, May, if you haven't done any training, if you live in the cold weather, you say you're going to get out, you're probably not. Because uh, hiking in cold weather is, you know, if it's icy and da 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 You know, go for May. That gives you plenty of time to back that in. You do do, do all these five-mile uh, uh, hill repeats and, and whatever else. But I think the first thing is just say you're going to do it and pick a date. Just pick the date. Everything, all, it's like in life. If you say, I'm going to do this, normally your mind leads you to what you want to do. If you're saying, my intention is to do this, that's why I listen to Deepak in the morning. I love setting my intention of what I want to do for that day and try to figure out, well, how do I accomplish it later? First thing is just to say you're going to do it. Do the training. You can do it. I mean, I think, hey, 92-year-old can do it. Anybody can do it. If you're sitting on the sofa, get off the sofa. All right. Last thing, Julian. Um, yep. when, it, when it comes to the Grand Canyon, real simple. When it comes to the Grand Canyon, what's your why? Other people. Now, I mean, it started just that I wanted to do it. Now it's all about others that I can share this experience with. It fills my heart. I mean, everybody has something that they do that makes them feel good about themselves. And for me... It's that last moment when we get to the top and they look across and they're like, Julian, you were right. We did it. And, and, and not even more so right there because they're so tired. They're like, oh, this is great. The next day when you go back out on either rim and look across and they're like going, how did I do that? You did it though. You did it because you said you wanted to do it and you went and you kicked butt and you didn't take no for an answer. And I think that's exactly why I do it. I just love seeing people um, accomplish things that they, you know, a lot of my friends, they all said, I never even thought about hiking the Grand Canyon until I met you and you were like, oh yeah, you should hike the Grand Canyon. It just puts a little spark in their mind and then to see them do it, there's, there's nothing better to me. You know, there's nothing better. That is Julian Coiner. What a character, 
what an inspiration. Everything you'd want in someone to help you across the Grand Canyon. By the way, just an hour or so after our conversation, the folks at Guinness made it official. Alfredo Aliaga now holds the Guinness World Record for oldest person to have ever accomplished a rim to rim. 92 years old, 92. And something tells me he's not done yet. Well, if you found value in this episode, we sure would appreciate a rating and a review on Apple, Spotify, or whatever platform you're listening on. The video of this show is also available on YouTube, along with a growing library of informational videos that are all about hiking the canyon. And for some cool canyon merch not available anywhere else, please check out our website, brightangeloutfitters.com. Maybe grab one of those rim-to-rim in-training hoodies to help you take that first step toward hiking the canyon. All right, that's it for this time. My name is Brian Special, channeling my inner Julian by encouraging you to go hike the canyon, take that first step, embrace the journey, and ultimately hike your own hike, whether that be in flip-flops or commando or uh, never mind. We'll see you next time on the Grand Canyon Hiker Dude Show, presented by Bright Angel Outfitters. <laughs>